else is ready for the 2020 NFL season? Because if you're like me, I know you're enthusiastic about it. Let's go ahead and get started with this video, the 2020 New York Giants draft class grades. Yes, what's good everybody? Welcome back to Chat Sports. I am your host Nick Dayas at The Lamb Show is where you can find me. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel, youtube.com slash chatsportstv. Let's get started with the first selection for the New York Giants, Andrew Thomas, offensive tackle out of Georgia, number four overall. And the rumors were true, folks. Last week, on the video that we did for Chat Sports, we talked about how there was a lot of buzz from many GMs and scouts in the NFL saying that the Giants are honed in on taking Andrew Thomas with their first pick in the first round, number four overall. And let's talk a little bit about him. He's the offensive tackle from Georgia. Per PFF, the number one offensive tackle on the board. 41 starts in college. Most polished offensive tackle coming into the draft. 1,075 pass block snaps, only 37 QB pressures. You know who gets excited when he hears that? Daniel Jones, because Daniel Jones was a turnover machine in his first year. He showed a lot of upside, but you need to keep your quarterback upright. You find a quarterback, you protect them, and you go after theirs. The three ingredients to building a successful football team. He does has he does have ties to the New York Giants staff, if you really think about it, because of Kirby Smart. Kirby Smart is the head coach for Georgia, was on the staff with Joe Judge and Nick Saban back at Alabama. The running backs coach, Burns, formerly of Alabama, good friends with Kirby Smart. They were all in the same clique, so they had some ties between Judge and Kirby Smart. Immediate day one starter for the New York Giants on the offensive line and it could provide salary relief later down the road with Nate Solder's big, big contract. Let's take a look at the depth chart. I think he gets inserted right away into that right tackle spot, which they brought in some veterans to compete for that position. But ultimately, I do think we see Andrew Thomas. And I want you guys to weigh in and let me know, did the Giants draft the right guy at number four? Type Y for yes, type N for no. You guys all know me if you've been watching these videos which you have based on some of the engagement, and I appreciate that. But you also know my love affair with one Isaiah Simmons. I really wanted him. They needed the defensive playmaker. But in the end of the day, it doesn't matter how good your offense is. And the Giants have potential to have a really, really good offense with some of the weapons that they have. you got to keep your quarterback upright, can't have happy feet, so he can de deliver the ball where he needs to deliver it. Another guy that the New York Giants drafted in the second round with the 36th pick overall is Alabama safety, Xavier McKinney. Best safety in the draft, shocked. I was absolutely shocked that they got him in the second round. They didn't even need to trade up to get him. If you remember correctly, sort of deja vu. They took Landon Collins in the second round after taking on offensive tackle Eric Flowers. In that draft class, another Bama safety coming over. Nick Saban said he's one of the best safeties that he's ever coached. Again, more ties to Joe Judge and this New York Giants staff. So they know him well. And also it's a guy that he had his eye on while he was at Alabama. Position of need and probably the best pick of the second round if you look across the entire second round. This is a guy who many people like Charlie Casserly of NFL Network had him as his number 10 overall guy on his big board and the Giants got him 26 picks later outstanding value and we talk about the versatility of one isaiah simmons who went to the arizona cardinals this dude is also very very versatile he played over 200 snaps in the box as a safety in the slot and deep in coverage so this is a guy that the giants can move all over the field like a chess piece so i'm very very excited to see what happens with xavier mckinney if you look at his 2019 stats 95 tackles 5.5 of them for loss Past breakups, he had five, three interceptions, and four, four, four forced fumbles. I want you guys to tell me, though, between the two, based on the value and the position and need, type one for Andrew Thomas, type two for Xavier McKinney, which was the better draft pick? Was it the offensive tackle out of Georgia or staying in the SEC? Was it the Alabama safety? Let me know in the comments below what you think. Another guy that the New York Giants drafted in the third round, pick 99, is UConn offensive tackle Matt Pert. His 36 and 5'8 
inch arms were the longest of any offensive lineman at the combine. Seven total pressures and 415 pass blocking snaps. They don't need to start him right away they, the way they need to do with Andrew Thomas. Also, there's a third round pick. You have the luxury of putting him in the system, grooming him for a year to maybe one day become a starter for your team. There's a lot of upside with this guy. He was a standout at the senior bowl. And again, he doesn't need to start right away because you have Thomas and Solder, two guys that you are projecting to be starters ahead of them. And I think it's very important that he's a project offensive tackle that they have time to groom to become that starter. So no rush for Matt Pert out of UConn to make an immediate impact. Another guy who I think is definitely one of the wild card picks that the New York Giants had and probably in the entire draft, this guy can have a huge impact in many, many places on the field. And that is UCLA corner, Darney Holmes, the fourth round, 110th pick in the draft. The biggest wild card of the draft for the New York Giants. And here's why. He provides not only special team value, he's had a kick return in college. They need a punt returner as well that can be a threat. He also loves to tackle and can be a problem on special teams on the defensive side as a gunner. Also, smartest defensive player in the draft per a scout that told Ralph Vacchiano of SNY. Can never have enough cornerbacks also, guys, in the new age of the NFL. With teams running more and more spread offenses, four or five wide receiver sets, about 70% of the league ran three wide receiver sets as their basic formation last year. So you can never have enough cornerbacks. And the Giants need to have as many cornerbacks out on the field as they can, especially when they're playing some of these offenses. Now, when you look at the offenses in Philadelphia and in Dallas with C.D. Lamb going over there, there's a lot of weapons that these teams that they're going to be playing multiple times a year are going to be putting out there. So you need to have a lot, a lot of cornerbacks. I absolutely love the pick of Darnay Holmes from UCLA. Another guy who is very similar to the Matt Pert role in the sense that you don't need this guy to be an immediate starter or have an impact, but he does provide depth for a position of need, and that is Oregon guard Shane Lemieux. Round five, pick 150. He was a second team All-American out of Oregon, adds depth to that position behind Zietler and Hernandez. Started all four years at left guard at Oregon so this guy has seen it all one sack and 16 total pressures in 2019 on 497 pass blocking snaps for one Justin Herbert who went to the Chargers in the first round so I like that pick as well because what the Giants have done in this draft is draft positions of needs and their big needs and important needs they drafted a lot of linebackers and defensive backs and offensive linemen, which is something that they really need. So before we continue, subscribe. The draft might be over, but we'll keep moving forward with more Giants content all off season. Please subscribe in the bio below. It is very easy. It takes about four seconds and you click one button. Penn State linebacker Cam Brown, 183 is the pick that they made him round six length and range at linebacker very unique build of linebacker 6'5 233 pounds he had 15 tackles for a loss in five sacks in four seasons with the nittany lions he was the leader of the nittany lions defense over at penn state very big for his position and versatile he tested pretty well at the combine for his size and again, common theme, the Giants are addressing a need. And linebacker, despite bringing in Blake Martinez from the Green Bay Packers, some would say overpaid, but ultimately it was a position of need. And you just throw as many things as you can at the wall and hope that it sticks. And with the Giants having desperate need of linebacker, who knows, maybe this guy with his unique build could provide something. But I see him more as an immediate starter on the special teams for the New York Giants. Another guy that they drafted, at linebacker Carter Coughlin round seven pick 218 and I know that name sounds familiar but no folks confirm there is no relation to the Giants great head coach Tom Coughlin four-star recruit out of high school could have went to Ohio State University so this shows you that this guy was a baller coming out of high school but he picked to stay close to home three years started at Minnesota 22 and a half sacks in his college career Another linebacker that they drafted out of South Carolina, TJ Brunson, round seven, pick 238. Again, more linebackers. More linebackers, that is what the Giants are doing. 
something is going to stick with another linebacker. Like I said before, if you throw enough things at the wall, something's going to stick. So maybe if that linebacker doesn't work out, maybe this one will. Three consecutive picks at the linebacker position for the New York Giants. Undersized linebacker though, six foot, close to 220 pounds, six sacks in four years during his time at college. So he is not a guy that's going to put up big numbers in the sack department, but he's a two time team captain. And that is something that Joe Judge put an emphasis on, whether it's guys that he brought in as undrafted free agents or even the signings that he made with Dave Gettleman in the offseason. He wants leaders. He wants high character guys. And when you're a two time team captain, that is something that you provide. Let's do a little bit of a stat comparison, college stats for the three linebackers that we're looking at. Cam Brown, 198 tackles, 14.5 tackle for a loss, 4.5 sacks. You're looking at Carter Coughlin, who had 158 tackles, 40 tackles for a loss, 22 and a half sacks. And then you're looking at TJ Brunson, 283 tackles, 21 of them for a loss and six sacks. So when you're looking at these guys, Coughlin, is more of the sack guy leading the way with 22 and a half sacks, but then the tackling machine is TJ Brunson with over 280 tackles during college. So of these draft picks that we mentioned right now, the three linebackers, which one of them was your favorite? For me, I'm gonna go with TJ Brunson because he's a tackling machine and ultimately he might not have the wow and flashy plays that others might, He's a guy that when he puts his arms around you, he brings you to the ground and stops the play, which is something that is very, very underrated and underappreciated in all levels of football. Another player from Minnesota. This is the second player in the draft that the Giants have taken from Minnesota. Cornerback Chris Williamson, seventh round pick, 247th pick in the draft. He's a transfer from Florida in the SEC. Started nine games in his last season in college and was a standout from the Shrine game, a game that is very, very important for some of these college kids coming out to the next level. And of course, Mr. Irrelevant, the Georgia linebacker, Tay Crowder. Not only the last pick for the New York Giants in the draft, pick number 255. He was also the last pick in the entire draft. He moved from running back to linebacker his freshman year in college. So it shows you that this guy has some explosiveness and has a lot of athletic ability. Former teammates were Andrew Thomas at Georgia. Andrew Thomas already came out and said that he was very disappointed in how far that Jay uh, Tay Crowder, excuse me, fell in the draft, but he's excited to reunite with one of his buddies. He started 13 of 14 games last season, finishing with 62 tackles, four of them for loss, and was a semifinalist for the Buckus Award, which is for the best linebacker in college football. So let's just do a quick recap of the 2020 draft haul for the New York Giants. Round one, pick four, Andrew Thomas. Alabama safety, Xavier McKinney, round two, pick 36. UConn offensive tackle, Matt Pert, round three, pick 99. Round four, pick 110, is UCLA cornerback Darnay Holmes, who I'm very, very excited about. Oregon guard Shane Lemieux started all four years in college. Round five, pick 150. Then we got Penn State linebacker Cam Brown, round six, pick 183. And then we have four picks in the seventh round. We got linebacker Carter Coughlin, round seven, pick 218. Pick 238 is South Carolina linebacker TJ Brunson. Minnesota cornerback Chris Williamson. Again, two players coming out of the Gophers. Round seven, pick 247. And of course, another Georgia Bulldog. That is Tate Crowder. Round seven, Mr. Irrelevant in the New York draft. So let's give a grade out, folks. Go in the comments below and leave a grade. Overall thoughts on the New York Giants draft class. I'm going to go ahead and say B minus. I say B minus because they addressed two big positions of need and the common theme in the draft was two big positions of need and when you factor in the value that they got at Xavier McKinney where they got him and the ultimate wild card in Darnay Holmes out of UCLA I think the Giants have upside to get to a B plus and if these guys could be guys that end up re-signing with the Giants after their rookie contract which is something that has not happened for the New York Giants first round and second round picks in a very long time I'm excited to see how this goes, but let me know again your thoughts in the comments below. I'm going with a B minus. So before we finish up, here's the complete list of the Giants 
2020 undrafted free agents. Of course, once the NFL draft ends, it is not over for some of the guys that did not have their name called. So here are some of the players that have signed with the New York Giants as undrafted free agents. We got Case Kukis, quarterback from Northern Arizona. We got Javon Leak, running back from Maryland, who Javon Leak had one of the highest yards per carry in all of college football with Maryland at 7.2 yards per carry. Kyle Markway, tight end from South Carolina. Austin Mack, wide receiver from Ohio State. And then we have a run of wide receivers that the New York Giants have brought in. You got Benjamin Victor, also from Ohio State. You got Derek Dillon, wide receiver from LSU. You got John Rison, wide receiver from Canada. This dude is an absolute beast. 10 touchdowns in 10 games over at British Columbia. And he's also six foot seven. You wanna talk about a guy you should keep your eye on come mini camp and training camp and in the preseason is this dude, six seven. No other wide receiver the New York Giants have is over six foot one. So this is a big, big body for Daniel Jones to potentially be highlighting in the red zone. You got Kyle Murphy, offensive lineman from Rhode Island. Benjamin Victor, as we look at some of his stats, 35 catches, 573 yards and six touchdowns over at Ohio State. Then you got Tyler Haycraft, offensive lineman from Louisville. Nick Lalos, defensive end from Dartmouth. Dana Levine, off, uh, outside linebacker from Temple. And then you got Christian Angulu, cornerback from Hampton. Which undrafted free agent will make the biggest impact I really want to keep an eye on John Rison, folks. This dude is six foot seven. Like I mentioned before, the Giants don't have that size, especially in the red zone. Maybe a jump ball situation or a guy that could just go up and get it. Not that, not that fast, but not that slow. Also, to use a draft cliche, so I'm very, very excited to see what happens with this dude. So let me know which undrafted free agent will make the biggest impact for the New York Giants and might be a standout come preseason. I'm at The Lamb Show on all social media outlets. Nick Davis reporting from Chat Sports, and I'll catch you guys next time.